Welcome to the Hamumu Halloween Home Horror Hoedown, the podcast where we watch scary movies so you don't have to. From award-winning to completely unknown, we take them all way too seriously. I'm your host, Mike Hommel. And I'm your host, Solange Hommel. Now warning, we use a ghoulish number of spoilers, so watch the movies first. Second warning, we don't know anything about anything, so don't take us seriously as we take these movies seriously. Today's movie was going to be an entirely different movie until we were reading about the entirely different movie and realized that it has some problematic individuals in it and we just decided we didn't want to go there. Yeah, and that's fine. Don't have to see every movie. So instead of watching Ninth Gate, that has Johnny Depp and was directed by Roman Polanski, we decided to watch Ninth Passenger because it came up when we started searching the word ninth and it looked like it would be terribly entertaining. Yeah, it said right in the description uh, something about, you know, there was a mysterious ninth passenger on the boat who started something about murdering unsuspecting college students. And I'm like, yeah. Yes. That's always... Murdering unsuspecting college students is always a good time. So today we're talking about Ninth Passenger from 2018. And it starts... It seems like it's starting at the end of the movie, right? Like the very beginning of the movie is all a quiet ocean... With a boat that has, you know, no life signs on it. It's all dark and quiet. And there's a police boat sirening its way up. Yeah. And they're like, oh, wow, we, this is bad. And But we see that the police guys are, they're bad guys because they don't want to, you know, find out the truth or anything. They say, tow it and burn it. Well, that was the point where I was like, ooh. This isn't the end of the movie. You know, we're not doing like a preview of the end. This is a cycle being born out kind of movie where we see that this is how a cycle ends. Now we're going to go through the whole cycle and come back to the same ending. What was my an suspicion. artistic film. It's possibly the only artistic thing about the whole film. Well, the issues begin at the very start with the title of the film, The Ninth Passenger. We have a boat, and eight different people get on it through various means. You know, one guy's pretending to be there so he can steal stuff, and there's a partiers and a guy who's brought a girl there to, you know, make out and whatnot. And they're all there, and there's eight of them. So, hmm, who's the ninth passenger? Here's the twist to the film. What's the twist? There is no ninth passenger. <laughs> there are two different monsters That come and try to get them. So, what? Why? Also, neither one of the monsters really is a passenger (laughs) on the ship. Like, it's not moving at any point while that monster is on the boat. It attacks them at the end of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It kind of just hops on the boat, swipes some people off, and hops off. That's no passenger. No. And also, legitimately, that monster killed fewer people as far as I could tell, (laughs) than the the people people in this movie. Well, that's when we were watching it. I was like, this is like Agatha Christie film. You were like that. (laughs) Yeah. Because it was intense mystery. This guy sneaking aboard wants to go into the safe and get the information, but he's pretending to be the engine mechanic. Yeah. He's pretending to be the engine mechanic. The chef is pretending to be the captain. (laughs) Yeah, you have to be really on the ball to follow all the depth and complexity of this powerful film. Layers. Layers. I I do think that people are killing more than the monsters are is kind of the point. You know, it it is one of the things the movie was trying to say. Like, these monsters were created by scientists, Mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. Didn't go into a lot of that. We went (laughs) way into Marty's love life, but didn't really go into much about the actual plot. But I mean, I think the point was, as Jess so expositionally and dramatically pointed out repeatedly as as she, you know, 
cursed the name of this company that was (laughs) polluting the earth. Yes. You know, I think the point was that we are impacting the cycles of nature in some way and it's bad and, you know, we're bringing harm upon ourselves. Indeed. And then there's corporate cover-ups and they're going to come and tow it and burn it again at the end of the movie. Indeed. Which, hilariously, like the military guy who shows up to do the cover-up talking to the two remaining living people on the boat is like, I'm sure you understand we can't have any witnesses. And I was like, why are you so sure they understand that? Because I'm pretty sure they don't understand that. Yeah, they're probably like, I think we should be allowed to live. <laughs> right? And, oh, speaking of the end of the movie, abrupt ending to this movie. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. It was one of those ones where like there was an end of a scene and then it was just like, yep, that's it. Roll credits. Like black. They got away from the tow it and burn it guys and swam out to a raft, but they didn't make it to the raft because the fish monsters got them. There you go. And then, yeah. Everybody's dead. I mean, I guess there wasn't much more to say. Like that was the end. Like (laughs) everyone was dead. (laughs) The conspiracy was going to be hidden once more and, and life goes on. Yeah. I mean, start the cycle that. anew. They will have to get a new uh, steal things from people guy. Yes. I think he was just a contractor. It was not a big deal. They could get anybody. Except, I mean, yes, but he was, I think they probably used him fairly often because mm. he came off of the boat at the beginning of the movie and then was on the boat that this movie was yeah. about. So, I mean, I think I think he was their go-to guy and now they're going to have to find a no- new go-to guy. It's a little bit of more of that anti-capitalism discussion there with him. In the very beginning, you know, he, he gets off of one job, he gets in his car and it very bluntly flashes in our face, bills, and he's got a... a creditors on the phone and like this guy needs money what's he gonna do he's been forced into this life gig work doesn't pay man no (laughs) no secret dash secret dash (laughs) assassin dash uber secrets (laughs) so okay so i feel like we've mostly been complaining about the fact that the story was was not expertly written let's say it wasn't it was lacking in a lot of areas. Let's shift to the acting per se. Let's let's talk about our illustrious cast of characters. So very quickly, we have our eight characters. We have Nicole and Jess, who are two friends who are in college. Nicole is studying to be a lawyer, although she's possibly one of the dumbest people I've met. <laughs> And Jess is very sad because she just broke up with somebody. Somebody. Or somebody broke up with her. Yeah. Whatever. She's a sad girl. They meet up with Marty and Lance. Marty is a rich guy whose dad owns a boat. And the evil corporation. And the evil corporation. And uh, Lance is his terrible human being of a best friend. Yes, his frat bro of a best friend. Oh, he's the worst. (laughs) So multiple times before they even get on the boat, he basically accosts women in the park and like yes, like asks totally. them if they will have sex with his friend. Yeah, he's like, oh, he just had a breakup. That's appealing. Yeah. And then we have Brady, or Hot Stuff, as I called him through most of the movie, because I don't think we learned his name until Jess was screaming it in the water right before they got eaten by the monster. Yeah, which makes you wonder how she ever learned his name, but right. okay. So we have Brady, who's there to steal things. Then we have Christy, who is Marty's secret girlfriend. Yeah, so secret to us at least. No, I think she's secret to everyone. Like, mm. like he's he wants to be in a relationship with her, but he won't tell his dad about her. And like, like that was her whole thing is she was mad that he wouldn't bring their relationship out into the open. I see. I don't know. I don't really understand. So she just shows up at his dad's boat, because that's a great way to keep it secret. Yeah. And is like, I thought you could use some company. But she's mad because Jess is there. Yeah. Mm, Drama. And then finally, we have the captain, who turns out to actually be Malcolm the cook, who is entertaining Tina, a hookup of some kind. Yes. Not a hooker of some kind, as she is amused by the prospect of later. 
Right. Every everyone thinks that of me. I'm like, sweetie. <laughs> this must be well, something happening there. So yeah, the, he's he's using the boat. He's pretending this is his boat, you know, so he can get some. Mm-hmm. Those are eight individuals. Yeah. Amongst those individuals, who did you think was the best actor slash actress? Oh, that's what you're going to ask me? It's a difficult question, isn't it? It is hard to say. Uh, wait, I was I was going to name one and then I'm like, then no, no, no. Okay, okay, let's ask a different question. Since that one is impossible to answer. It's really hard. Different question. Which did you think was the most compelling character? You know what? what? The most compelling character is... Brady hot stuff because oh. he had things to do. He was here to steal stuff. And then it turned out not just, he wasn't just a thief trying to get money. He was working for the corporation that they were trying to buy out and stealing secrets from them and stuff like that. So it was like layers, layers upon layers, layers upon layers. And it all kept coming out throughout the movie bit by bit. So very artistic, very Agatha Christie. <laughs> You keep you keep hitting that point. Yeah. I think it's interesting that you say he had things to do because one of my biggest problems is that nothing happened in this movie. We were yes. halfway through the movie and nothing had happened. He, one thing had happened, he had gone in and stolen stuff out of the thing. But then he just was stuck on the boat, so he was just hanging out. And even with all of these characters, we've got the guy with his the the girl that his friend is trying to hook him up with, and the girl he's in love with secretly. We've got the two horny kids. We've got the not a hooker and the pretend <laughs> captain. Like there are so many things that could be happening, and yet they just sit around and talk at each other, and they don't say anything. Like they're no. talking for thirty minutes. And nothing is said, and nothing happens. Yeah, it's a, it's a long way till something happens. And then when it does happen... Uh. Right. Okay, I did lie. Something did happen. They did a bunch of coke. Oh, yeah. There was a montage. A coke montage. Yeah, so when something did happen, what what is that? what was the turning point for you? When did things start happening? I would say they started happening when the computer on the boat went beep, 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 beep. To tell them they were about to run into an island. Which, what? Uh, They weren't. (laughs) Okay, they were very far away from the island. Uh But they were pointed toward the island. But apparently none of them had any idea of how to make the boat no longer point at an (laughs) island. And also, it was drifting anyway. Why didn't they turn the boat on? They could have turned the boat on. But guess what? It turns out they couldn't because there was... What was wrong with the boat? I don't know. The power went out eventually. Yeah, the power went out. Why did the power go out? I don't know. Hot Stuff pretended it was because he, they didn't let him fix the engine. Yeah. But that wasn't the issue because no. the en- there was nothing wrong with the engine. Yeah, that's a good question. Why the boat stopped working? It's like maybe there was a, a you know EMP field around this secret island so that no one could get there. I don't even know. Or the know. fish monsters cut the power. But it didn't stop working until after they needed to, to... Like, that shouldn't have been part of their equation of, oh my god, we're about to hit an island. Yeah. Like, you're on a boat, man. Like, <laughs> turn the boat. Yeah. The thing is, what our discussion so far has left out is that... You know how people make collages where, you know, they have a scrapbook. They open it up to a page and they put down different things from different magazines and pictures of their friends and it's all it all means something to them but it's just sort of a random assortment i have to ask are you are you talking about like serial killer monta you know (laughs) no no collage are you talking about like a manifesting your best life kind of collage or are you just talking about a straight up like 90s teenage girl hung up in her bedroom pictures of actors she has the hots for kind of collage i mean i think that one would work the best for this okay. film okay. yes okay this movie is poorly poorly constructed 
at no point do you really understand what's happening or why. It's just a bunch of random things cut out of random magazines yeah. and then put on with a... A glue stick. Like a generic glue stick. Yeah. The kind that doesn't really stick very well. Yeah. Like, one of my favorite moments in the movie is actually really subtle, but I don't think it's supposed to be. <laughs> Lance and Nicole are walking around the boat, worried about an intruder being on the boat, a ninth passenger, if you will. Yes. And Lance has his harpoon at the ready. And he's walking in front of her, and she's actually off screen at this point, uh-huh. but her shadow is on screen. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, her shadow, like, flails its arm and, and gets disappears. Gets away. And I'm like, oh... I guess she got murdered, but there's no musical sting. There's no calling attention to it in any way. It's just like, if you didn't notice that, you didn't notice it. In fact, I didn't notice it. So then when he starts pointing back in that direction, he's just like flinging that harpoon, that that, uh, spear gun, all pointing it in all different directions. I was like, oh, he's going to harpoon her because he's just like... Swinging it back where she I, is. I thought that too, even but though then she I was saw gone. her flail. Yeah, she just wasn't there anymore. And no splash. So nope. Apparently, I don't know where she went. She didn't scream no. until like 10 minutes later. <laughs> yes, it was so... It, it, you're not exaggerating. It was actually like 10 minutes later. And we're we're watching a scene of Jess like dramatically opening folders in the office. (laughs) And another example, we could not tell anything of what she was looking at. It was just like, these are corporate-y things. But it was all in like code. It was all, everything was in a different kind of like weird code. (laughs) But I mean, the point is that scene told us nothing. Yes. She was just being shocked by it. Yes. And then there's a scream and we were both like, who is screaming? There's no one left. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a girl, right? Cause, yeah. Because most of the people had left on a little raft to go to the island. But yeah. And then a few scenes later, we end up out on the front of the boat and there's Nicole. Like she never uh, went anywhere. Well, she's she's not well. She's like no, she's, crawling or something. Yeah, and, she's injured. But, but like, where did what, she go? Who knows what happened to her? Like, she got hit on the head with a coconut, instant knockout, no sound, and now she woke up and screamed. And of course, good news, then Lance did harpoon her, so problem solved. Yeah. Honestly, the real monster in this movie was Lance. Yeah, I think that's fair. From beginning to end, he was the bad guy. Later, it turns out that Christy and Lance had done something, which was a betrayal of Marty. But here's the thing. So Lance's story is that he and Christy were both just drunk and something just happened. But Lance is a terrible human being, and I don't believe anything that he says. So, and Christy was like really, really upset. And Marty was way more angry at Lance than he was at Christy. So I suspect that it didn't go down the way Lance described. It's unlikely, yeah. But yeah, just another example of Lance being a dirtbag. A beanbag. I guess. I don't know. That doesn't seem strong enough. Dirtbag is worse. (laughs) At least you can eat beans. (laughs) You can eat beans, yeah. (laughs) That was also another example of how vague everything was in this movie. Like, I mean, it was obvious that they had hooked up in some way, but... It was never really said, and it was always just like, hey, what you did was so terrible. And so terrible, in fact, that Marty stabbed him with a knife, although Lance had the knife first, so whatever. But Yeah, they got into some kind of altercation. Lance ended up with a... Like butcher knife yeah. sticking out of his and stomach. And then Marty ended up like going full psychopath where he was like, yeah, I'm covered in Lance's blood, but whatever. And yeah. luckily the fish monster killed him after that. So it was okay. The fish monster really did like clean up a lot of the terribleness. Yeah. And then the security guy cleaned up after the fish monster. Yeah. At one point after all of this, Hot Stuff and Jess are the two remaining survivors. And they're, yeah. I think Hot Stuff figured out that the fish monster didn't like lights, like bright lights. Oh, is that what was happening? I think so. So he's like getting all of these like flashing lights and putting them and they're like in one spot on the boat surrounded by all these wow. flashing lights. That was not explained in any way. No, I, and I might be making that up. <laughs> 
And I want to give the epilepsy warning that this movie is not going to give you. (laughs) You will absolutely die if you are photosensitive epileptic and you see this movie. Yeah, it was very flashy. It's not good. Yeah. They get it all set up. And like, we have all these close up scenes where we're like right there with them and there's lights flashing everywhere. And, you know, it's very upsetting. It is. It's hard to watch. And that is interspersed with these like wide shots where we're way back and we can see the whole boat like yeah. on the water and the island in the background. Yeah. And there are no flashing lights. You None. cannot see anything. It's just and dark. then it zooms in and flashy, flashy, flashy. And it zooms out and it's just dark. <laughs> And I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. There was a lot of that. Like, when they got on the raft to go from the boat to the island, Uh there were a couple times where it would show water. Like, it was just the camera zooming towards the island along water. And, like, I guess this is signifying that the raft is making its way towards the island. I thought you were going to mention that there were several times when people were on the raft and the shot of them on the raft, there was clearly light above them. Yeah, there was a lot. And and like like light changing, like it would get brighter, like there was supposed to be something happening. And at the same time, we're seeing, well, not at the same time, much earlier, we're seeing these like red flares get shot off of the boat. Yeah. And I'm like, is that what this is trying to be? But I really think it was just that the lighting guys, like... There was no continuity anywhere. No, there was with some the lighting. crazy lighting in different things. Yeah. Yeah. It was very upsetting. And and because my brain kept trying to make sense of it, the fact that there were flashing lights and not flashing lights, my brain kept thinking <laughs> we were jumping from one time period to another. Oh. Because that's the sort of thing you use to indicate this is when and this where is this different. is happening. And yeah, it was ah, it was so confusing. We haven't talked at all about what happened on the island. Did anything happen? Well... Oh, there was one good thing. That was was the 10th passenger. The other fish monster was chasing them around the island. And several people got killed in the sense of they just weren't in the movie anymore. And we never saw what happened to them, which that's that's the way most of the people in this movie died. Yeah, that's like Malcolm and Tina. Yeah, except Tina, that was the fun part. She went by herself to the raft, running away from everybody else to try to get away. And something happened that made her get dead and fall off the raft. Like it was just a a splash or something. She was there and and then then she she wasn't. Yeah. It was one of those things in this movie that you can't tell what's happening. And then Brady starts going out to to like wading out to the raft to try to get it so they have a raft again and all of a sudden her body pops up in the water just laying there and he's like i guess i should go for her instead and he Uh starts going towards her and then she goes back under (laughs) and she pops up somewhere else and the fish monsters were just messing with him it was terrible (laughs) oh it was pretty crazy no so what i was talking about is on the island they find this sciencey room yeah, very where the science-y. experiments were being done at the same time that on the boat Jess is watching the video oh, yes. of the sciencey room where the experiments are being done and once again things are happening and she's reacting to them but you can't tell what <laughs> nope. is happening nope there was somebody on a table i know that and, and I, I think and, he kind of grabbed somebody uh-huh and then everything stopped and she was like aghast yes totally in shock i mean the ideas were all there like i was like oh okay like i i put together oh yep they created a monster the monster got away yeah you know whatever like everybody around yeah the idea was there yeah because the the sciency room is like filled with blood (laughs) no bodies though no just blood fish monsters eat bodies i guess yeah so i mean like you get it but also i just felt like i was writing the story myself because yeah it was such vague hints that well, again, I had to put all the details in. This is a movie for intellectuals where they give you the pieces you need if you've got the brains to figure it out, you know? This is not just for your run-of-the-mill horror fan. This is for serious thinkers who want to take notes while they watch a movie. I guess. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. They weren't dumbing it down for the audience. <laughs> Not for the audience. <laughs> no, not for the audience. 
Oh, yeah. I have a note in here, and I have no idea when I wrote it because it really doesn't matter. It says, people keep finding things, but we don't know what. <laughs> and that really sums up the course of the film. That is, that is very appropriate. We get people that is reacting the to the things they're finding, but we yeah. have no idea what they found. Yeah. It's almost like, so that collage idea works even more so for me. Like, I really like it because I was just thinking about how it's it's also like people keep finding things like it's all in the wrong order. Like yeah. how with Nicole, like she disappeared <laughs> and then she screamed and then she was not disappeared. Like, it's like they took the story and chopped it up into pieces and just yeah. like threw it in the air like confetti <laughs> and then glued it down onto the collage in whatever order they picked it up. Yeah, that makes sense. And like the, the Malcolm piece just fell off the board yeah. and they were like, oh, he, drifted, he's just gone now. Drifted under the bed somewhere. Nobody <laughs> looked for it. Yeah. He was the duck feet of this movie. Duck feet. <laughs> This movie. I don't think I liked anything about this movie. Fair. And and from the very beginning, like not only was was the Lance character written in such a way that like the feminist in me was immediately on edge, it continued that way. And not just with Lance's character, but yeah. like the whole movie was just a string of women being treated badly and then being like, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. And like what I wanted if I were going to take this movie and rewrite it, because you know I like to do that, <laughs> I would leave those pieces in, but then I would have it all come together with that all of these women were part of whatever team that was putting an end to the bad corporation and that they were all being okay with it because they needed to stick around so that they could yeah. like kill all the idiot guys <laughs> later or something. Yeah. I don't know. Like, sure. Because it didn't make any sense how Tina finds out that Malcolm is completely lying oh to gosh. her about being the captain. And it just... Her reactions were weird. Right? She spends like 12 seconds being angry and then is like, right back to, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, what she caught, why? We forgot at the very beginning, she finds a camera he placed filming <gasps> them sitting on the couch. Right. And she's like, what's this? And he's like, oh, it must... I mean, it was it was a phone, but with like it, all kinds of things, yeah, on it. like attachments, so it was big. And uh -huh. he's like, "Oh, that must have fallen out of my pocket." And she was like, "Okay," and right. that was all fine. Yeah, and then we have Christy being hidden away from everyone, but then like she's just okay because oh, and then being kidnapped. Like the reason the <laughs> boat goes That's away from right. the dock in the first place is Marty is like, "Oh no, Christy's gonna leave. I need her to stay. I'm just gonna drive us out into yeah. drift us into the middle of the ocean." And she was like, "Oh, just a couple hours." Yeah, she's the one who points out that she's been kidnapped. Yeah. And then she's like, well, as long as it's just a couple hours. And I'm like, what? Yep. That was just everywhere in the movie. And and when you think about the women who are in this movie, they are all of the like worst stereotypes and tropes of women being written by men who don't like women. Yeah. Right? Like like Tina is the almost a hooker, like <laughs> willing to do anything if you have enough money gold digger kind of character. Captain. Jess is the, you know, frigid, ball busting, like <laughs> takes everything too seriously character. Uh Nicole is the up for anything. Yeah. She was interested in Lance immediately. Like, that was incomprehensible to me. She, like, met him and was like, oh, yeah. Well, like, from the beginning, she was just like, we're going to go find some guys, right? Yeah, like, that, that was all she that wanted to plan. do. Now, they did point out that she's a lawyer. Like, <laughs> like there were these attempts to be like, no, 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 Tina's not a hooker. That's hilarious. <laughs> Why would you think that? Yeah. They tried, or they pretended they were making these characters complex, but they were just making them, like, deeper stereotypes at that yeah. point. And then we have Christy, who is like the mouse of a woman and like just will put up with anything as long as she feels loved kind of character. Like it was all gross mm -hmm. and offensive. I disliked that. But then you put on top of that, there was nothing else about the movie that showed any kind of like quality. 
true. I don't know. I mean, maybe they were trying as hard as they could, but it did kind of feel like we we dodged the Roman Polanski movie and then just like walked full on into <laughs> something that was probably just as bad. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> So all of that being said, I give this movie one empty canister of natural selection juice. <laughs> yeah. Like the fact that it's empty too, that's that's the key. There was just a post-it that said natural selection and that was that explained something? I yeah. Again, like because I am a relatively intelligent person, I was able to see a canister of glowy blue juice and be like, well, that can't be good. Yeah. And then later they were like, here are some more canisters. Oh no, this one's empty. I'm like, all right. I mean, I guess I see what you're saying. It's not hard. <laughs> it's not There's hard. nothing complicated about it's this just story. It's poorly constructed. Yeah. So anyway, one out of five. It was not good and it wasn't bad enough to be fun and it had all the you know the misogyny that i hate i'm also giving this one empty bottle of natural selection juice out of five because it was boring and it was not fun and i'm sad that we saw it yeah the sad thing is like some terrible movies are even fun to talk about because Uh there's like so many interesting things and this just was it wasn't fun to watch. It wasn't really that much fun to talk about. Like, it just wasn't fun. And, you know, that definitely means that this is going to be one of the ones where the people who made this movie end up, like, <laughs> contacting us on social media or something, because that's always how it works. But I don't know. I'm sure there are wonderful people who tried really hard, but this movie did not work for me. Me neither. Oh, and I didn't even mention how much of the end of the movie was shot day for night, uh, which yes. is terrible. I hate it. It's like the worst thing ever. It was at varying levels of brightness. Like there were parts where I'm like, oh, the sun's coming up. They've, you know, they've been out there so long, but then no, it's darker now. Yeah. 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 And no, oh, maybe the light is just from the police boat, but (laughs) nope, that's definitely the sun. And then there were others where I'm like, oh, this is full on daylight being filmed through like blue plastic. Like, (laughs) uh, I don't know. Anyway. Fight the horror of a world gone mad. I feel like the hot tip from this movie shows up in multiple ways in 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 all of it's perhaps actually the the theme of the movie is that old adage if you lie down with dogs you get up with fleas. Hmm. Anyone who was even remotely halfway decent, quarter of the way decent in this movie was hanging out with all of these other incredibly terrible people. And so they all got what they deserved, I guess. I don't know. They all had it common as far as I'm concerned, even the ones that were less terrible. Um, But it makes, you know, when I tie that to the political world, I guess I just think about the fact that if you are willing to sacrifice your your morals, your ethics, your the way you've chosen to live your life in order to accomplish something by, you know, getting in bed with corrupt politicians or people who are willing to break those ethics and morals and whatnot. It's not going to work well. Like the, it does it never pans out. You can't save the world by teaming up with the people who are actively destroying the world. It doesn't work. That makes sense. So that's that. Like, I know it seems tempting sometimes to be like, yeah, but these guys have the money and the power and the influence. And if I could just like connect with them and maybe just use some of those resources and twist it to the good, it doesn't happen that way. It twists you to the bad. It does. And, And if you're going to do the right thing you have to stay on the path of doing the right thing you can't you can't dip your toe in the dark side <laughs> sure <laughs> because it's going to get you like it's just it it doesn't it never works yeah yeah that's that if you don't want fleas don't sleep with dogs oh sleep with dogs though they curl up at your feet they're so nice if you don't want fleas don't sleep with mangy dogs it means is okay. It's just you put a flea collar on them. Sir, <laughs> you're ruining my metaphor. I just like dogs. <laughs> if you don't want fleas, don't sleep with politicians. There you go. <laughs> we'll see you all next week 
Don't forget to contact your fleas. <laughs> and the elected representatives they live on. <laughs> okay. Hello, how are you? Are we going to do this podcast national public radio style? Welcome, friends. Isn't it great that the Harvest Festival came so early this year? The pumpkins are huge. <laughs> Is this you doing Will Ferrell doing NPR? <laughs> Not Will Ferrell. Uh, I don't know. Those ladies. <laughs>